Fan football fans, welcome to Friday Night Varsity Flashback. I'm Aaron Scootmaker, joined by prep writer Pal Latimer. Week three of the playoffs is now in the books. We had a couple good games tonight. The rain held off, which we were really hoping it was. I was checking the weather all day, and, and during the worst, we got the best. We got the best of the competition as well. We did a lot of traveling to bring you some highlights, so I hope you enjoy them. The first game we got to was all the way up in Beulahville, East Duplin. Pal, you were there. Tell us about it. I was there. East Duplin came in on a 10-game win streak. They're the number one seed in that, uh, in that bracket. Taking on Tarboro on a 20-game win streak, last year's state champions. Um, it's a defensive battle. You know, everybody's going back and forth. Um, both teams left a lot of offense on the field, uh, mainly East Duplin. Three drives in the first half inside Tarboro's red zone, came away with three points in that first half. They should have had three touchdowns, came away with three points instead. Um, you know, for a while in the third quarter, uh, East Duplin started coming back at them. Uh, actually went up uh, 10, to, 10 to 7 at one point, but uh, late in the game, Tarboro came back with a, with a uh, with, with a nice little touchdown run there, a nice little drive. 7.37 to go in the fourth quarter, Tarboro goes on top. East Duplin misses a field goal as time expires to blow it. Ah, it, it's a tough loss. And when I got to that game right around halftime, I was on the sidelines, I heard one of the assistant coaches come up say, we left too many points on the field, we should be up 21 to seven right now. Instead, it was seven to three, there were kind of a couple turnovers there in the third quarter. Justin Pickett did have a very nice touchdown run, but it, it wasn't enough. Absolutely, it just, it just wasn't enough for these guys. You know, they had, again, in that first half, they had a drive where uh, uh, Tyrone Matthews fumbled at the goal line. And that's a huge, I mean, Tarboro covers, runs out the clock at the end of the half. That's seven points off the board right there. Yeah. Um, not, not, not the best offensive performance in that first half. It's important to have those home games in the playoffs. It's also important to hold on to the ball. One team that had no problem holding on to the ball tonight also didn't have much trouble finding the end zone. That was Wallace Rose Hill. That's where I started tonight. And there was a very young, very nice young gentleman that introduced himself to me. He said, I like to watch your show every single week and I especially like the hits. So just for you, bud, we're gonna throw some extra hits into this highlight. We're gonna highlight some of that Wallace Rose Hill defense because for the second straight week, they came out, they played tough and they hit hard. They gave up just seven points last week. They would give up just seven again this week. They plugged the middle, they kept good contain on the outside, they pass rushed every single time, they dropped back, which is very few, but they did. Uh, the Hurricanes really had no answers for this one. Believe it or not, Wallace Rose Hill did not score on each of their first two drives. They got stopped on fourth down, and then they fumbled. They scored just about every time after that. Jonathan Drakeford con continued his offensive onslaught. He had a 59-yard gallop for a touchdown. He finished the night with 129 yards on four carries. Omar Carr, he had one of two touchdowns right here with his carry off the left side tackle. Wallace Rose Hill was in cruise control from there. They win that one going away 50-7. to seven. They finished with 449 yards of rushing on the night with nine different backs. Absolutely. Not the first dominating performance of Wallace. They've been rolling through that bracket always. You know, it's, it, they, no one's even come close to challenging them. Oh, absolutely. Next week, they will host Plymouth. Plymouth uh, beat Monteo. That was a rematch for, for them. Plymouth won that one 36-32, a very tight game there. So Wallace Rose Hill will be home again next week. And as we say, let's get into the scoreboard. Let's go to some of the other games. One team that was on the road at Carborough, East Bladen, this was an offensive shootout. We really didn't know what to expect. We knew both offenses were good. East Bladen came out to play today. They fell behind 14 to nothing in the first quarter. They scored the next six touchdowns of this game. They went up 42-14 at half. They got outscored 34-14 in the second half and ended up hanging on for that 56-48 win. Antonio Merchantson, another great game. 20 carries for 149 and four touches. Deron Burney, 7 of 11, passing for 166 and two touches. Saquon Johnson had both of those receiving. He had three catches for 127 yards. And Xavier McCoy, he broke out a little bit tonight. 15 carries, or 157 yards on 10 carries, excuse me, and another touchdown. So a, a big one there. The re reward for East Bladen is they get to play Tarboro. Absolutely. And in class 1AA, you got Pender going up against Goldsboro. Pender again rolls. Solid team going up against Goldsboro. They win 28-8. to um, Shaq Hooper, uh, 31 carries for 142 yards and two touchdowns. Another big night for that running game of Pender. Josh Johnson, 22 carries for 146 yards and a touchdown. Derek Holmes, 15 carries for 86 yards and a touchdown. Um, you know, absolutely, Pender just dominated. They went up 18, uh, excuse me, 28 to zero before giving up a, a late touchdown. Um, so, you know, Pender again 
continue, continues just to roll right on through the playoffs. Absolutely. Pinder in that game ran 72 plays on offense. 71 of them were rushing. Interesting enough, Powell didn't get a touch tonight. Hooper, Johnson, and Holmes ran 71 times combined in that one. Goldsboro entered that game. They had scored 40 points or more in six consecutive games and had given up a combined 33 points. Pinder was able to hold that to eight points and put up 28. Just a great job by Pinder all around there. Absolutely, and now they get to take on Southwest Onslow. That'll be a difficult one in, in Jacksonville, in Southwest Onslow. So the Stallions and Patriots, that it makes for a very good game. The one common opponent they have this year, Wallace Rose Hill, both of them lost. Both of them played very tough games. So we'll see how that one goes. And to wrap it up, we mentioned the Wallace Rose Hill, Hill win. Uh, come back, join us on Wednesday. We're going to preview. We got three teams left in it. We opened with 16, got down to eight. We're down to three now. We're in the semifinals, so final four in just about every class. Uh, New Bern will play on Saturday. We'll get you an update on that one. Um, you're already on the website. Keep looking around. Stat standings to be updated for you. I just got done doing it right before we, we uh, taped this. Uh, join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Star News Varsity. Pal, final word? Uh, no, that's about all I got. That's about it. We'll keep checking it out, guys. <laughs>